what we came up with, it had to be a nonprofit that was had a location in the Midlands and had state that the money would not be funded if they wanted somebody wanted to donate to the nonprofit. It wouldn't come through the commission; would have to go directly to the nonprofit. And we also stated that they had to be using most of the money they did gathered for their services rather than for their administrative costs. Seventy percent, I think, is what I remember. And we would only allow two of those inserts in a year. Okay. Oh, one small thing we changed. Our post-employment benefits policy for people that are hired afterwards is how much we insurance we pay for people that were hired after last Wednesday. It after they retired. Retired, retired. No, retired and let's say that we were paying as an employee portion of their if they retired with 20 or more years we played pay the employee part. If they retired with only 10 years, we pay a certain percentage. Okay. That was it. All right. Thank you. Mr. Charles. Uh, EDC did meet on the third, but uh, I was unable to attend due to another commitment. Okay. And no one to comment, so we move on to second reading of the ordinance amending the annual compensation for mayor and council. <coughs> Motion from Charles. Is there a second? Second. Second from Todd. Any discussion? I yes. Have, oh, go ahead, Rachel. I've talked to a number of people, um, uh, all of which have been opposed to this. They're not opposed to the council getting a pay increase as much as they are, as it not being tied to attendance or having to have the training. <clears throat> um, and um, again, I agree with that. I, I do feel like that we should we should have some kind of, of uh, mandatory attendance to council meetings and as well as the training that's offered. Um, I agree with Rachel on that. I was hearing why is it that uh, council members don't have to come to the meetings and still get paid. They weren't happy about that from the people in, in my district area. Also, I do feel like all the training that is available to us and the money is there, I think it, it should be mandatory. I agree with Rachel that every new council member must attend all the required meetings by the state. Or we have uh, uh, there are consequences to be paid. Sanction, probably. Um, to go back to um, time to <coughs> compensation to meetings attendance, that would have been in um, rules, and procedures. rules and procedures, and not necessarily by ordinance, as this is by ordinance. So, if that's something that you feel very passionate about, looking back at, we certainly can and um, go through that in the work session. But put that back in place. Any more discussion? One comment is that this might bite some of our council members in a different way. I'm for it, but realize that there was money for travel and for training that was not going to be taxed in your income tax, state or federal, and now that money will be. It's just just comment. Okay. What a question. I will be recorded 
with the minutes. A copy will be retained with the minutes, and of course the media uh, would get a copy to report on. But basically this is establishing um, October as uh, fire prevention. It's what's the date in October? Let me get back there. October 4th through 10th as Fire Prevention Week, um, urging town residents to install smoke alarms, check your batteries and smoke alarms, and the last paragraph is, um, therefore, I, Mayor Marguerite J. Kraps, do hereby proclaim October 4th through 10th, 2015, is Fire Prevention Week in batesburg Leesville, and I urge all people of batesburg Leesville to install smoke alarms in every bedroom outside each sleeping area and on every level of the home, including the basement, and support the many public safety activities and efforts of the Batesburg Diesel Fire and Emergency Services during Fire Prevention Week 2015. So there's number one. You know, Ma's not on here, but I really do want at least to show her hands or do a roll call that everybody supports these. District one? District one. Just a yay or nay? Sure. Yes. District two? Yes. District three? Four. Oh, excuse me. Yes. District five? Yes. District six? Yes. District seven? Yes. And I certainly support it. Now, next one is um, regarding September as uh, library card <coughs> sign up month. For one who worked 17 years with the uh, Lexington County Public Library System, I know the value of the public library to all of us as citizens and the value to reading to children. Um, and I would be a big proponent for this. And it's just urging families to get out and support the library, get your library card. Enjoy a good book. They have books on tapes, they have videos. I listen to books on tape a lot now. And this is therefore be it resolved that I, Mayor Marguerite J. Kraps, do hereby proclaim September Library Card Sign Up Month in Batesburg Leesville and encourage everyone to sign up for the smartest card at the Batesburg Leesville Branch Library. Doesn't cost a dime. Let's do it. Yes. Can they open that up? Is that changed? Lexington County's free saluda. I did change. <laughs> District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 4? District 4. Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. And I certainly support it. The last resolution we all need to sign, I'll pass it down after we get through uh, reading. Uh, this is uh, the safety statement that the town has to adopt annually, I believe, isn't it, Mom? Yes. And um, to dispense with a lot of it, we'll just say, be it there, uh, be it further resolved that the town will support compliance with all federal and safety regulate state federal and state safety regulations, provide and require the use of personal protective equipment by all employees, and ensure that all employees are advised of and understand their loss control responsibilities in the performance of that, their work. And I think this has to do with um, OSHA regulations and loss prevention and all of that. Um, again, this is not anything that requires a vote, but I would like an acknowledgement from council supporting, please, ma'am. District 1? Yes. 2? Yes. 4? District 4 supports. 5? Yes. 6? Yes. 7? Yes. And we'll pass it down and ask for the page to sign. And, um, everybody go back? Yeah, go back. Um, got a long agreement here. Uh, that's the approval of agreement between Lexington County and the town of Batesburg Legal for Municipal Judge Services. Uh, this is just a renewal of an agreement somewhat similar to what we've had in the past. Um, required, actually, we have a chief judge, but the county serves as the backup uh, in the absence of our chief judge. Chris, anything you want to um, add to this? The, the only thing that changed was, I think, the salary went up, which was commensurate with the position that was being paid by other towns. And this, in the last agreement, it said that the whatever Lexington County Magistrate was assigned to District 3 would be the judge. This one says that the Chief Judge for Lexington County will assign the judge. 
I called and talked to them about that change, and they said that's the way it had to be to comply with court administration, and that that's what it had to be. There was no negotiation about it. So if you want the judge to stay the same, you need to sign the approved agreement as it's written. The chief judge said that they would assign the closest judge, which would be whoever here. Who are presiding over this district? Right. Okay. Uh, Councilman, what's the terms of the agreement duration? I, I think it's year to year, basically. If, if, if they send somebody here you don't like, it does have a 30-day get-out clause. So if they, if they stop sending, like like Judge Morgan, I think Judge Morgan worked well with the police department. If they decide to start sending somebody from the other side of the county here, and the town didn't like that, all you got to do is send written notice and you're out of the contract in 30 days. And if we uh, get out of it, if we bail, use the bailout clause, what would we do at that point in time? Hire another judge? Okay, we'd have Robert Cook with us, we'd have to have somebody else to back up the yard. Right. And then it, it could be, doesn't necessarily have to be a lawyer or a judge, it could be. Uh, and we send for a magistrate, not required to be that. And at that point, we wouldn't be paying the money to the county for that if we did the bailout clause, right. we would not be you're, paying you're, money. You pay them monthly, so if you use the bailout clause, you don't pay them anymore. I'm sorry, I should have asked that. <coughs> Do I hear a motion to uh, approve the agreement? Motion to approve. Motion from Ty. Is there a second? Second. Second from Charles. Any discussion? District 1. District 1 votes yes. District 2. Yes. District 4. District 4 votes yes. District 5. Yes. District 6. Yes. District 7. Yes. And I vote yes. And all right, Ted. We've got the approval to expand uh, for the purchase of um, two vehicles for the DPW. Okay. Uh, I was contacted by Tim Kraps and Tim Shumpert um, about two vehicles in the uh, DPW maintenance crew department that have recently. One blue in transmission, one blue in engine. Um, one of the vehicles is a 1988 Ford F-250 uh, with approximately 96,000 miles. The other one's a 1994 F-350 with over 150,000 miles. Both of them have, in addition to mechanical problems, the surface bodies are in very bad shape. The shop has had to weld pieces on so that the doors will stay shut on the surface bodies. Uh, the recommendation came to me from both uh, Mr. Kraft and Mr. Schumpert that, that these vehicles be replaced. The, there was not much need to, to invest a lot of money into keeping these trucks operational. Um, with that in mind, they went to the state con contract and they are proposing um, in place of the F-350, the purchase of a new F-250 4x4 with the new service body. Um, with taxes and the service body, the state contract price is $28,837. And rather than uh, purchasing an F-250 to replace the 1988 Ford F-250, they have made a recommendation to go to a two-wheel drive Chevy 1500 with uh, side toolboxes, and, and that cost with taxes would be $20,411. For a total cost of both vehicles, uh, 49248 um, We are requesting those funds from the DPW Reserve. Um, after expenditure of those funds from the Reserve and with the transfer of September into the Reserve, we would still have a, a balance to spend in that account of $798,728.02. And uh, staff recommends council will approve the expenditure on these two bills. Can I hear a motion to approve? I'd like to move we make two purchases. A discussion? Can I have a second? Second. Second from Todd. Now we can discuss. Good. Why can we not save that eight thousand and some odd dollars by a little about nine thousand dollars buying the same one, same vehicle, the Chevrolet, twenty thousand dollars each. Twenty four hundred. Because they do the the Chevy 1500 is a regular style pickup, um, which they feel like for one of the vehicles they could utilize that. 
but they do need a you service. Utilize that to do what? A lot of that could just be could just be standard running around checking all the hydrants, hydrant maintenance, things like that. But when you get into actual water and sewer line repairs, and you're carrying around more equipment that's needed to perform those duties, that's where the F-250 with a service body with more compartments to carry more pieces comes out. It's okay. also a four-wheel drive. Too. Okay, I got that. Um, I had requested a list of the, the vehicles and the years um, from Town Hall. There was one, two, three, four, five vehicles in, in that department currently. And the last time, of the, the last purchase of a vehicle in that department was in 2002. Um, so I, I did ask Ted if apparently then there are two other trucks that are in, listed in fair condition, and that was the, a 2002 and a 1996. If we would, uh, down the road, meaning next budget year, maybe address those two, because uh, again, vehicles, getting the age on them, uh, I certainly feel like we do need to keep that department up and running and not have things let go because of vehicles that are inoperable. Okay, another question is, uh, what will we do with the old vehicles? Those will put, be put up for, uh, excuse me, those will be put up for bid to the public. Um, and speaking along those lines, we'll have a number of pieces of equipment this year that probably sometime after the first of the year we'll put everything up for bid. Any more discussion? District 1? District 1 votes yes. District 2? Yes. District 4? District 4 votes yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District A not here. <laughs> I vote yes. I think District A um, Next we have first reading of ordinance to amend section 177 of the General Code of Ordinances related to the Town Election Commission. Uh, Chris. Um, we had somebody that signed up to run for council that was on the county election commission. And the question started, I was asked to look into the county election commission job forms. Essentially, I think it was sometime in the early 2000s, council did a ordinance turning over all the functions of the county election commission over the election county, picking up petitions, doing the ballots, counting the ballots, certifying the elections. Everything was turned over to Lexington County. When I started looking, I didn't see anything really the Town Election Commission was doing other than walking in this room and telling y'all what the election results were. Um, and so I was asked to draft up an ordinance that would dissolve the Election Commission because it really has no purpose anymore. Because the question came up, how do we replace these people? Since somebody ran, they would have to be replaced on the commission. Now, I think there's only three people left on the commission. Isn't that right? This mayor will look at it. I only know two. two. Okay, maybe there's only two. Because there's essentially no ordinance as to how you put them back on. And so it was, it was a simpler fix to say, since everything has been turned over to Lexington County and it served no purpose to go ahead and resolve the, the town election commission because everything has been turned over to Lexington County anyway. And essentially by state law, that's what should have happened back in the early 2000s. That's what the state statute says. If you turn everything over, it's automatically supposed to be dissolved. And so this just fixes that. I don't know why that one line remained in the ordinances that the town shall maintain or retain a local elections commission when they serve an ex officio capacity and have no functioning authority. So. What is, what is, the, the line said something like it would stay in place to do jobs as the town may direct. It, even the ordinance itself didn't give them anything to do, and there's never been an ordinance to give them anything to do. So the, the, the simple fix is follow state law and dissolve the election. Do I hear a motion to um, make this change the ordinance? I'll make a motion to make this change. I'll second. Okay, second. Any discussion? District 1. District 1, that's yes. District 2. Yes. 
District 4. District 4 votes yes. District 5. Yes. District 6. Yes. District 7. Yes. And I vote yes. Thank you. And yeah. I've got four things to try to make this quick. Uh, the first thing, I uh, had a me meeting recently with the Lexington Police Department over at their town hall. Uh, they want to purchase and are purchasing a line of fire target system. Um, currently, the town of Lexington utilizes our, our police firing range for qual annual qualifications, and anytime they hire somebody new, they bring them out to qualify. Um, they want the technology out there to have moving targets that, that can both turn as well as swing. So they are purchasing a $129,200 system uh, to install in our police firing range, which we absolutely love the idea. Um, all they're asking of the town is that we pour the concrete uh, to place it on as well as run the conduit that will run all of the lines for that system. Um, which I think we're going to do pretty much most all of it in-house minus the pouring of the concrete um, and whatever funds will come from donated funds to, to the police department for the firing range. Uh, this should begin sometime after the first of the year. Um, let's see, we're going to work on an agreement between the town attorneys that, that they are going to assume all maintenance responsibility of that equipment. And additionally, all they ask of us is that we maintain the grounds, uh, which we currently do anyways. So we got a very good opportunity, uh, thanks to the town of Lexington. Uh, the police department just received hey, can a. I ask you a quick yes. question about that? Yes. All right. I'm assuming that the town of Lexington Waynesville gets to use this facility they're installing. Absolutely. And I know that we have some other agencies that come in and use that firing range as well as Lexington. Will they have the opportunity to use those facilities as well? In our discussions, the town of Lexington showed no issue with them utilizing it as well. Thank you. Todd, what is the cost that they are asking for the town of Lexington Police Department to pay? Um, the uh, concrete pad, just a just a general uh, bid that I. I just checking, not exact, just a general was about two thousand dollars to pour the concrete pad. The running of the conduit it'd be cost of the pipe and uh, cost of renting a trencher, but uh, all the labor would be, like you said, be done in house on all that. And we have to build a control tower room, which would be also uh, in, done in house. So, and we have uh, about twenty four hundred dollars in donated funds for the range. So we'll use that money for, for the concrete. So it won't cost the town's budget anything? No. Okay. Well, I don't want to say anything. Well, very minimal. Very minimal. minimal. Okay. Very minimal, yes. Anything else on that? Yeah, very minimal. Well, like if, if we don't have enough money to donate it and we have to buy $100 worth of conduit pipe or something like that, it will not be an exorbitant amount of money. It'll be, uh, like I said, some of the pipe costs maybe or something, some of the lumber, uh, buying some lumber for the uh, control tower, things such as that, but, if we run out of the other, but it'd be a very minimal amount. And the police department budget actually has about five to $6,000 yeah. budgeted in the budget. For to keep the range up. For anyway, to keep the range <laughs> and improve it. So, it would come from that line. That's really a better But when you, but especially when you, uh, when you, Weigh that against the fact they're going to spend one hundred thirty thousand dollars to buy the equipment to put down there and let us use it. Uh, what we put in to it is very, very minimal. All right. Uh, the police department did receive a bulletproof vest partnership grant um, just about a week or two ago, uh, which is through the Department of Justice for four thousand seven hundred ninety-six dollars and sixty-two cents, and that will fund. 50% of the cost for 15 new bulletproof vests for the department. No state agency has received funding this year for the vests from the JAG funds. We put in, I got that look. <laughs> we, put in, we put in for every couple of years. Yeah. We've had it ongoing since back in the 90s. Uh, to, we do uh, it every year. And last year and this year both, no state agency had any vest appropriations really? funded. They that. all go to municipalities. I think our last award was 2013. Yeah. How many vests was this about? It'll uh, pay 50% of the 15 vests, so it'll essentially pay for 7.5 vests. All the offices vested in 
Oh yeah, no, we always have been. Uh, we, we first started issuing vests in 1984, uh, and we've been buying vests ever since then. And what's the shelf life on this? Five years. Five years. Five years if you use it, and how many if you do not use it? It doesn't matter. Does it just, it? At, at the end of, that's an industry standard that I've had problems with, but it is an industry standard. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. They're dated, and it, once five years over, you have, you have to replace it because they are stamped. They're dated stamped. And, it, well, I say you have to. If you don't, and then an officer does get shot with one, and it's beyond that date, the town is liable because of not issuing him an up-to-date vest. Okay, and the other grant news, uh, the fire department has received a grant as well, which we received notification on in the past two weeks. Uh, it is an assistance to firefighters grant, uh, which is through the Department of Homeland Security for $45,715, which will purchase 16 P25 800 megahertz radios. Uh, we're part of a uh, statewide Palmetto 800 system, and that system is being upgraded to a P25 system, uh, which means that we don't have a choice. We have got to upgrade our 800 megahertz radios. And we had until January 1, 2017 to, to have this conversion done. And if council will recall, we budgeted $22,000 this year to purchase five new radios and I think upgrade one and then the next budget, we were going to do the rest of the radios. Well, thanks to this grant, we will actually be able to purchase all of the radios and make the upgrade to the one in this budget cycle, and the town's cost will be $10,235.83. So we will not even really utilize half of the budget of funds in that line item, and we'll have all of our radios taken care of. Uh, so just a compounding, um, wanted to kind of throw some stats out there about what we've done for grants over the course of the past year. Uh, the town has secured $724,391.62 in grant funds towards the different projects and capital purchases that, that we've done over the past year. So I want to thank all the department heads and, and the staff that, that have reached out to utilize these free funds for the town because that certainly helps our operating budget for them to go after these things. So a special thanks to these two guys over here for their recent grants. And uh, the last thing, the audit's underway. Dooley and company is, is hard at work. They've already been in the office uh, obtaining a lot of their documents and they've already come in and done inventory in some of the departments that is required of them. Uh, I think they should be done in the next month or two and, and be prepared to make their presentation. Very good. We've got the executive session. Um, essential agenda items for next month's meeting. Anybody got any? Okay. Yes, I'd like to be put on there. Ma'am? Yes, I'd like to be put on the next next month's agenda. I want to. I guess I'll sign in. Um, no, ma'am, as a council member, you won't be on the agenda. You'd have to give us. I just, just what to say. Who would you like to discuss? I'll let you know. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't think when we came, when we went through the rules and procedures, that council would not directly address a council member. You see, I didn't sign that policy because I felt like it was important mm -hmm. that I could always speak to the public. And I told that you was, all we know was doing that. But in the policy so. that was adopted, council members will not sign up to speak on the agenda. So when do council members get a chance to address the public? Uh, Ma'am, as yes, a council member, you're not addressing the public. You're addressing your co-seated members. When do I have the right to address the public? Councilor? Any? Can you? At the meeting? No, this is the problem. Why after the meeting, they're all sitting here. So when Then when, when the meeting's over, you can stand up and address whoever wants to listen to you. When you're here, we're doing town business. And that's what y'all voted to put in place as you They voted voted that. Okay. So but when you vote, this, this, is, this is the business meeting for the town. 